In this video, we're continuing our discussion of partial differential equations. In particular, we're going to be talking about parabolic PDEs. So two of the more common parabolic PDEs are shown here. So this one um, is sometimes called the diffusion equation, where we have uh, ft is equal to alpha fxx, and then another example is the convection diffusion equation, where we have ft plus u f x is equal to alpha f x x. So this term, this alpha times the second derivative of f with respect to x, is the diffusion term. And then this term, which is u uh, f x, is the convection term. And alpha is the diffusivity, and u is the convection velocity. So different forms of these equations appear in um, kind of different applications across engineering. So the, the solution of these equations is a function, f of x and t, which must satisfy an initial condition at t is equal to zero. So we can write that as f of x is zero is equal to some function of x. And the time coordinate has an unspecified or open final value. Since the equations are second order in the spatial coordinate x, two boundary conditions are required. So parabolic PDEs are propagation problems, which are essentially initial value problems in an open domain with respect to time or some time-like variable. So we specify an initial condition and our boundary conditions are specified along the boundaries of the domain. And then we march forward in time and we have this open boundary in the time domain or time-like domain. The solution in the domain of interest is marched forward from the initial state and guided and modified by the boundary conditions. So parabolic PDEs govern these, par these propagation problems, and these PDEs are solved numerically by marching methods. So as before with elliptic PDEs, we will apply finite difference methods to solve the parabolic PDE, and the same steps will be repeated. First, we will discretize the domain to get a finite difference grid or mesh. Then we will approximate the PDE with a finite difference approximation and substitute these finite difference approximations back into the PDEs to obtain algebraic finite difference equations and then solve the finite difference equations. So the solution domain d of x and t in xt space for an unsteady one-dimensional propagation problem can be depicted with the finite difference grid as shown here. So we start with an initial condition and we propagate that forward in time. So we'll move to the next time and continue on. And then this can be continued along this open time domain. Two-dimensional physical spaces can also be considered with a solution domain d of x and y and t. So here we start with a, a, an initial condition in our xy space and march that forward in time. And then this can continue on in this um, time direction or time-like variable direction. Three-dimensional physical spaces can also be considered with a solution space d, x, y, z, and t. So here we would start with an initial condition and then march forward in time. So here the initial condition would be in all of x, y, z space. And then we would march that whole thing forward um, in time here. So let's consider the unsteady 1D diffusion equation, which is sometimes called the heat diffusion equation or the heat equation um, for a, a generic dependent variable f of x and t. So this can be written as ft, or partial f by partial t, is equal to alpha um, partial 2 f by partial x squared, where alpha is the diffusion coefficient. So if we look at the solution domain, um, where this is, say, temperature, and this is um, kind of the initial condition on, on this axis here, and then this is the time axis. So you can see we start with some initial temperature profile, which then... Um, progresses in time and we get this, this diffusion down to some um, steady state condition. So the first method we're going to consider is the forward time centered space method or FTCS for the diffusion equation. So the base point for the finite difference approximation is IN and then the, um, 
the the stencil is shown here. So we we have these. So the time is dependent on. Um, so at n plus one is dependent on the point at at n, and then we also discretize in the spatial domain along here for so i minus one and i plus one. So we use a first order forward time approximation and a second order central difference approximation for the spatial derivatives. So we get the, um, the expression shown here. So fi at n plus 1 is dependent on fi at n, as well as um, the neighboring points fi, fi plus 1 at n and fi minus 1 at n. And you can see that we've, we're using a, a first order forward um, time approximation and a second order um, spatial approximation. So if we solve for fi at n plus 1, we get the expression shown here where d is uh, defined as alpha delta t over delta x squared, and it is called the diffusion number. So this is an example of an explicit finite difference method, where the finite difference approximations of the exact partial derivatives in the PDE are evaluated at the known time level n. So you can see we just have um, f, at I, f of i at n plus 1 is just dependent on all of our um, function values at the time n. So the solution at a, a point in the solution time level n plus 1 can be expressed explicitly in terms of the known solution values at time level n. So th this, without going into the stability analysis, this method is conditionally stable. The next method we can consider is the backward time centered space method, or BTCS. So in this case, the stencil is as shown here. So we're using um, the, the time derivative is a first order backward method, and the space derivative is second order central. So we get the expression shown here. So f of i at n plus 1 is dependent on um, f i at n. So that's the, the, the x is kind of shown here. And it's dependent on these neighboring grid points at time level n plus 1 in this case. So at n plus 1 we also consider i minus 1 um, and i plus 1. And we rearrange the terms and we get the expression shown here where again d is equal to alpha delta t over delta x squared and is called the diffusion number. So you can see that this is a fully implicit method. So we've got um, all of these values are at time level n plus 1. So the finite difference approximations of the individual exact partial derivatives in the partial differential equation are evaluated at the solution time level n plus 1. So um, again, without going into the, the uh, stability analysis, um, implicit methods, as we know, are unconditionally stable. And so there's no limit on the allowable time step required to achieve a numerically stable solution. However, there is a practical limit on the time step required to maintain the truncation errors within reasonable limits. But this is not a stability consideration, it is an accuracy consideration. So the disadvantage of this method is that the solution at a point in the solution time level n plus 1 depends on the solution at neighboring points in the same time level, which are also unknown. So the solution is implied in terms of unknown function values, and so we end up with a system of finite difference equations that we have to solve to obtain the solution at each time level. Another alternative um, that improves upon the backward time-centered space method is the Crank-Nicholson method. So this is also an implicit method, um, but it uses second-order approximations for both the time and space derivatives. And it was developed by John Crank and Phyllis uh, Nicholson in 1947. So the stencil is shown here. So you can see that at both um, time levels, we are considering the neighboring points um, in this domain. And so um, it's, it's similar to the um, trapezoidal method that we introduced in solving ODEs, where we get this kind of essentially the average, this one half times um, the values at n plus one and the values at n. So again, it, it's an implicit method, but it is um, second order in both time and space in this case. 
So if we rearrange the terms, we get the expression shown here, um, where again, d is equal to alpha delta t over delta x squared, which is the diffusion number. So let's consider the unsteady 1D parabolic convection diffusion equation for some generic dependent variable f of x and t. So here we're adding the uh, convection term. So u is the convection velocity, and alpha is the diffusion coefficient. So the solution to this equation is the function f of x and t, and this function must satisfy an initial condition at t equals 0, which we can write as f of x and of 0 is equal to f of x. And then again, the time coordinate has an unspecified or open final value. And since the equation is second order in the spatial coordinate x, uh, two boundary conditions are required. So let's look at the forward time-centered space method for this convection diffusion equation. So again, we're using the first order approximation in time and the second order approximation for our spatial derivatives. And we end up with the expression shown here. So this is our um, stencil, if you recall, for the FTCS method. Again, C, or here C is, the, is U delta T divided by delta X, which is the convection number. And again, D is equal to alpha delta T over delta X squared, is, which is the diffusion number. And without going into the stability analysis, we can come up with a stability criteria for this method where C squared has to be less than 2D and 2D has to be less than 1 for the method to remain stable. Now we can look at the backward time-centered space method for the same equation. And again, this is the uh, stencil for this equation. And um, plugging in our, our uh, finite difference approximations and rearranging, we get the expression shown here, where again, C is the convection number and D is the diffusion number. Um, we can also look at this uh, relationship between C and D where PE is equal to C over D is known as the Pecklet number. Uh, so locally, we can write this as um, the Pecklet number is U delta T over delta X, and alpha is delta T over delta X squared. So cross out the delta T's, and we can see that Pecklet number is U delta X over alpha. And globally, the Pecklet number is UL over alpha. And so this can help us, um, this is something that can be defined when you're using or looking at a particular problem and you can see that the um, the spacings, the delta, uh, th that the um, it can relate the u and the alpha together. So for particular values, say l equals one, u equals 0.1, and alpha is 0 0.01, we can calculate this Pecklet number. So for those particular values, we would get that PE is equal to 10. Um, we can also note that unsteady transient problems can be solved for t goes to infinity or t goes to a very long time to determine the steady state behavior. Um, so if we wanted to uh, look at the equilibrium behavior, instead of considering some of the equilibrium methods that we talked about before um, with the elliptic PDEs, we can consider this these time marching method um, and just go for a long time. So in this case, um, as t goes to infinity, we get this behavior shown here. So if you look at the, the figure here, um, time goes in this direction. So this is our initial condition, this straight line. And then as time goes on, we end up with this line here, um, which is described by this equation. So that's just another approach to find the equilibrium behavior of, uh, of a system. So let's look at an example of the convection diffusion equation. So let's consider a porous plate with a thickness of one that is cooled by a fluid flowing through the porous material. So we've got this plate um, with our thickness in this direction is one. So L here is equal to one. Um, we've got some fluid flowing through the material with a velocity u and the material is porous. So the fluid is flowing through that. And we've got some boundary conditions defined on both boundaries. So the thermal con conductivity of the material is small compared to that of the fluid. So the heat conducted through the porous material itself is negligible compared to the heat transfer through the fluid by convection and diffusion. Um, so let's assume that the temperatures of the two faces are held constant. So T of zero and T is equal to zero and T of L and T is equal to 100. 
The initial fluid velocity is zero, so the initial temperature distribution is the pure diffusion distri distribution, and then we apply this initial velocity of, uh, we apply this velocity of U and then look at this um, convection diffusion process. So the initial temperature distribution is shown here, so it's just this um, linear distribution across the plate, and the diffusion coefficient of the fluid we can assume to be alpha is 0 0.01. At time t equals zero, the fluid is instantaneously given a constant velocity u is 0.1 to the right. And we want to determine the transient temperature distribution t of x and t up to 50 seconds using both the FTCS and BTCS methods. So the MATLAB code is available in the um, is available online, and this is the result that we get here. So this, uh, the, we recall that the U is moving in this direction, the velocity of the fluid. This is our the initial condition, which was the pure diffusion um, equation or the pure, pure diffusion distribution, and then when we apply that initial velocity, we get this um, convection happening as well. And so this is moving in time to our, um, essentially our steady state condition. So the steady state is, um, is, is out here. And this problem is, is up to 50 seconds. Um, and if you continue to go, you don't get much, uh, it's basically reached steady state by then. We can also show this on kind of a contour surface plot, um, where this is the initial temperature profile. So the this axis here is temperature, and then this axis is the spatial direction x, and then this is time um, along this axis. So this is the initial profile, and then you can see kind of how it changes to get the final profile. And so using the uh, backward time-centered space method, we are considering this equation here. Um, so at each time step, we get this system of equations. So we can go ahead and write this, um, write these equations out. And if we can put this in matrix form uh, to solve in our uh, code. And we get something uh, very similar result where again, um, time is going in this direction. And we can look at it again using the um, contour surface plot. So that is, um, those are some examples for uh, parabolic PDEs.